Welcome to episode 140 of the Gluttons for Punishment podcast, or GFP, a Toronto Maple Leafs and NHL podcast hosted by Michael Lepore and Anthony Bruno. He's Lepore, I'm Bruno. Thank you so much for listening and watching us on YouTube as well. The Toronto Maple Leafs have four games to go in the regular season. They are locked into the three seed right now in the Atlantic division. There's a chance that they could still finish as high as the two seed. Austin Matthews hit 66 goals. What an accomplishment. More than Ovechkin had in 07-08. The most goals in a season since Lemieux scored 69 in 1995-96. So is Matthews going to hit 70 goals? How do the Leafs look heading into the playoffs? And we're also going to talk about the shenanigans in Ottawa when Brady Kachuk lost his shit after Nico Heischer put the puck into the empty net. Ah, Senators fans, I promise you want to stay tuned for this one. Uh, And Leaf fans, of course. course. We're going to get into all of that and give you our thoughts and opinions on everything going down right now with the Toronto Maple Leafs and other topics from around the NHL. But before we do, it is time to officially welcome in my partner in crime, Mr. Michael Lepore, how you doing today, man? Anthony Bruno, always absolutely ecstatic to be here. Uh, Do you know how tired I am, Anthony Bruno? You know how bad of a baby brain I have? So let me tell you what Lepore did yesterday, okay? You know, cleaning up the kitchen. It's the end of the night before you go up to bed. I'm like, oh, man, I got to take out the garbage and the recycle. So go to the garage, you know, gather everything from around the house. Take it out because it's my uh, responsibility in this household. Put it out to the curb. Wake up the next morning. And actually, it's funny. I had some extra garbage. I'm like, oh, I'm going to throw it in the garbage can before the guy comes. Then I go a little later to my car. And I'm like, why isn't the garbage come? I'm confused. And I start looking around. And no one has their bins out. So Lapore put the garbage out a day early. I guess you've lost I your know. mind, buddy. You've yeah. lost your mind. That uh, that little girl that wakes up multiple times a night just for attention or a bottle or, you know, something as devastating as her pacifier fell out of her crib. Just, you know, let's wake up, dad. So am I allowed? I guess I'm allowed. There's one time in your life I think you're allowed to complain about being tired. And it's when you have a, a newborn child. Yeah, no, that's that's totally fair, Lepore. Let's just make sure that you don't botch the podcast. As yeah, well. sorry, so you're guys. You're screwing up garbage day. <laughs> You get no sleep. Stay alert for the next yeah. hour or so here. All right. Can you do that for us? Well, I botch it on a good day, so I'm not too confident. We'll <laughs> see. Oh. Well, you want to know who's not botching it right now is the Toronto Maple Leafs Lapore. Ayo. Three and oh over their last three games. Six and one in their last seven. Mm-hmm. Heading into the playoffs. At least right now on a high note. Who knows what's going to happen over the last four games to close out the season. There's a lot of great things happening right now. They're playing well. Matthews is going for 70 goals. They switched up the lines separating Matthews, Marner, and Nylander. Looks like the team has more balance. Uh, There's still some guys that have to come back from injury. Most notably, uh, Callie Yarncroak. Uh, We'll see how he slots into the lineup because I would imagine he's going to crack the playoff roster when he's fully healthy um so what are your thoughts right now on how this team is playing as we get closer and closer to the start of the stanley cup playoffs uh yeah leafs fans always uh tread carefully when it comes to how their team is performing in the regular season at any point in the regular season for that matter because we've been through enough um in crunch time that no matter how well they're playing, there's always that little shade of doubt. But I've said recently that I've been pretty impressed with the way they've played. And you mentioned the uh, that they're 3-0 since our last podcast. And I think they look as good as they've looked all season. The Devils game last night finished, what, 5-2 with the empty netter? That game, like Jake Allen stood on his head. That game should have been a blowout. I find now I'm watching these games and I have that confidence in them. They're offensively dangerous and they, they've been offensively dangerous all year, but I, I just feel like it's more consistent throughout the game. And then just, you know, watching it's kind of waiting for them to score. Like it's a matter of time before they, they beat this keeper, no matter how well he's playing. And 
again, good signs, good signs. Like people will be quick to say, oh, it means nothing. Um, what's the point? And even, you know, Leafs fans and Leafs haters will both say that. But I'd still respond and say I'd rather have them playing well than playing poorly. And right now they're playing well. Uh, someone posted yesterday that in the last 28 games, the Leafs had, well, they had the number one record in the league, but uh, Carolina also won last night. So the Leafs now, I think, are one point back of Carolina if you look at the last 28 games. So it's like a third of the season, man. To be the best team in the league in the final third of the season, it's pretty impressive. And the schedule isn't, uh, well, what do they have? They have Jersey, Detroit, and then they have uh, Tampa and Florida. Is yeah, how it they goes. close out the season against the the two Florida teams. Yeah, so it's a chance. I guess we'll see how it plays out if those last two games matter. Um, I think it's pretty well said and done that Tampa is not going to catch us. Um, but whether or not we can catch Florida, that could be something, and that could be a big talking point on as to whether or not guys dress um, for that final game if if it is of significance. But it's positives right now, man. And <laughs> I'm going to stress treading very, very carefully because we're getting that to uh, that time of the year. But they're winning and they're looking good doing it. Yeah, the team's playing really well right now. I love how the offense is looking and not just recently, but all season. The Leafs have been one of the best offensive teams in the league all season long. And that has been their Achilles heel in the playoffs. I can't stress this enough and we've talked about this on so many podcasts like if you're a true leaf fan and you've been following this team you know let's just say uh, listen we've been following this team for a long time but if you've been following since like the start of the austin matthews and mitch marner era the thing that's plagued this team the most in the playoffs is their inability to score in high leverage situations like they are not the same team offensively in the playoffs that's just how it's gone at least over the last number of years, maybe not back, you know, when they first cracked into the playoffs and they lost to the Washington Capitals that first year when Matthews, Marner, and Nylander were rookies. But so fun. there have been a lot of years where the offense has gone dry. So that, to me, is the most positive thing right now. They're getting contributions throughout the lineup. Matthews is playing out of his mind. It's a balanced attack. Now that Keith has split up Matthews, Marner, and Nylander, the one concerning thing offensively heading into the playoffs is the power play, which has been dog shit mm. the last month or so. That is a real issue. And even when you watch this team on the power play, they're just not moving the puck around as crisply. Like they're not getting the scoring chances that they used to. You know, I, I saw some signs in the Devils game of like, Things starting to get back on track a little bit, but that is the one thing that they need to get cleaned up ASAP over these last four games because the power play is so crucial in the playoffs. Like five on five, we all know how it is in the playoffs. It's so tight. Chances are not coming at the same rate as they do in the regular season. So when you get power play opportunities in the playoffs, you got to score, man. You go look at the, the last, I don't know how many the past, let's say, five to ten Stanley Cup champions. I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but they are all very good on the power play mm -hmm. in the playoffs. Yeah, I've seen I that. think about the years that Tampa won the Cup, even the year Colorado won the Cup. Like, teams are scoring at an insanely high rate on the power play. Like, you just need that to be clicking come playoff time. So that's a little bit concerning right now. But we know that Samsonov is going to be the game one starter. The defense core is kind of in flux. That's also a concern. Like, we don't know exactly if this team is going to show up defensively because <laughs> that's been their their problem all season long. But, man, if they play like they do, like they did against the New Jersey Devils and how they've been playing recently just, like, as a team when it comes to the defensive side of the puck, then I, I think that they should be fine. And, listen, it looks like they're going to play Florida right now. Florida kind of, like, limping into the playoffs. They have not been playing well. The Leafs at this point, I think, could really beat any team in the East in a seven-game playoff series because every team has their flaws. And the the Leafs' flaw, as we know, is is defense. But I don't think it's like egregious to the point that you know any team is going to walk all over them, especially any of these top teams in the East. I think the Leafs can stick with any of them. Yeah, you you mentioned the Samsonov thing. It doesn't happen too often in Leafland where almost like a story is underrated. But I think Samsonov's season has kind of been 
underreported. Like we have short memories and we forget um, how bad things were when he was at his worst, like that game against the Sabres where it seemed like literally every shot was just beating him, beating him clean. His confidence was in the fucking toilet. And now you watch him and, you know, they're posting his wins and his save percentage and all that. And that's great. I mean, that's what you want to see. But to me, it's just his confidence in the net and his calmness. And I just feel more secure with him in there. And people who listen to this pod know that I was really bullish on Joseph Wall. And in my brain throughout the season, I was just assuming that Joseph Wall was going to be the game one starter come playoff time. Um, And the reason for that was because of beyond numbers, it it was because of that calmness, that confidence in the net that I saw that Wall had over Samsonov. And I think I even went as far as to say, I can see Sammy blowing it more than I can see Wall blowing it. Maybe Wall won't be amazing, but he's not going to cost us a series where I was really nervous about Sammy. But I, I can't believe it. Like Hockey is so weird. And specifically, goalies are just even more weird. And to see how bad this guy was in the net, both both from the eye test as well as the numbers, to see that turnaround and what he looks like now and the results he's giving this team, it's crazy, man. Like like I said, it's not too often there's an underrated story in Leafland, but maybe maybe a 70 goal score takes attention away uh, somewhat from uh, from other players on the team. But bravo, Sammy, man. I'm happy for the guy. Yeah, his turnaround has been wild. At the start of the season, we thought that he might never play a game for the Leafs again. Like, honestly, mm-hmm. it got to that point where Leaf fans were like, holy shit, he's so bad that he might never play another game. Like, he got sent down to the minors. He had his mental reset. Everyone kind of thought he was done. Like, it's like, all right, we're moving forward with Joseph Wall and uh, and Martin Jones, and maybe Trey Living's going to pick up a goalie along the way and then Samsonov comes back and ever since he returned he's been lights out so if he can carry that into the playoffs and last year he outdueled Andre Vasilevsky now listen both of them were not that good at the first round it's not like Samsonov was lights out against Tampa but he was able to take down uh, his fellow countrymen in the first round and uh looks like he's going to be matched up against another Russian goalie in round one in Sergei Bobrovsky. So I- I'm looking forward to this, man. The Samsonov redemption uh, story has been incredible this year. It's time for a quick break to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Did you know that one man every hour, every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer. In fact, testicular cancer is the most common form of cancer among men ages 15 to 35. With April being National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, our friends over at Manscaped have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. Visit manscaped.com TCS to learn how to check yourself for early signs of cancer and as always you can use our exclusive code gfp20 for 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com lapore it's a great cause guys manscaped.com read the details see how you can check yourself out so next time you grab that lawnmower 5.0 and you're doing your thing use your other hand feel around maybe you'll find something that you really should get checked out and the earlier you get this stuff seen the better it is as bruno said manscape.com learn how to do this procedure then after that use the promo code gfp20 for 20 percent off and free shipping fellas not only do you have to look good feel good and play good you have to check yourself to make sure that your health is in order it's extremely important this is a great cause for manscape and as i said go to manscape.com tcs for more details And as always, you can use our exclusive promo code GFP20 at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. So head over to the website and I promise you won't be disappointed. It's time for an important message from BetterHelp, a sponsor of today's episode. Sometimes in life, we go through difficult times, whether that's personally, whether that's in a relationship, and your mental health cannot be ignored. And a lot of times, You can't tackle these situations by yourself. You need help. And that's where BetterHelp comes in. They make therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people. BetterHelp lets you have therapy sessions as a phone call, 
video chat, or even messaging. Whatever is most comfortable for you. BetterHelp will connect you with one of 30,000 therapists in their network. And in most cases, you'll be connected with a therapist within 48 hours. So go to betterhelp.com slash GFP for 10% off your first month of therapy. Lapore, this service is incredible. It is incredible, Anthony Bruno. Uh, mental health is something that's very serious. And be aware, if you're going through a dark time, you do not have to try to beat this thing alone. There are services out there that can provide you with some great help. BetterHelp is number one when it comes to that. As Bruno mentioned, there are different ways you can get in touch with people, different ways you can contact people. It's all up to you. Go to betterhelp.com slash GFB. Join 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to live healthier and happier lives. So go to betterhelp.com slash GFP for 10% off your first month of therapy to connect with a therapist and see if BetterHelp is right for you. Another story that has been unbelievable is Austin Matthews. Mm. The chase for 70 goals. It got to a point about 10 games ago where it seemed like maybe 10, 15 games ago where he slowed down. It seemed like 70 was out of reach. He was in a little bit of a funk. But he has been on fire lately, and now he has 66 with four games to go. Do you think he's going to hit 70 goals? All year, I mean, 70. Well, at one point, was he not even on pace for like 75, am I not mistaken? Yeah, like he was he... on pace for 70 plus at one point and then kind of slowed down. But now, like, if you look at his pace, he's on pace for like 69, a shade over 69 to be exact. So this yeah. is going to come down to the wire. Yeah, as I remember us talking about it a little earlier on and we put each other on the spot saying, you know, what do you think, what do you think he's going to finish with? I think my number was like, I think I said 64 or 66 just because, and not, not that those are low numbers compared to 70, but as the season goes on and okay, even if you're a game like 50 or 60, well, there's still 20 or 30 games to go and your pace has to be like, almost a goal a game like to get to, to get to 70 and if, if you fall below you got to go over but everything is just going in for him right now bruno and the simple answer i think he's gonna do it i think saturday night hockey night in canada against the detroit red wings and i just realized bruno and i remember because i was in the building he scored his 60th against detroit at home so uh, kind of serendipitous if he gets his 70th against the Red Wings as well. But yeah, I think he's going to do it. Two home games and then could be a beautiful thing. He could do it and then maybe rest the Florida trip if, if things are all, all locked into place. But I'm pretty confident in the guy now. I'll put it this way. What reason do you have to bet against him? That's it's hard it. to bet against him at this point considering he has seven goals in his last six games crazy i thought that we were gonna see a bigger reaction out of him when he scored 66 because we've talked about it on the show i tweeted this out as well like i thought 66 was the target especially mm -hmm. when he slowed down and it seemed like okay 70s out of the question but as i mentioned off the top of the show 66 is the best single season goal scoring output since mario lemieux scored 69 and 95 96 so alexander ovechkin unless he goes into cyborg mode, will never have a better goal scoring season than Austin Matthews has right now. It's 66 nuts. goals, man. So yeah, at this point, it's hard to bet against him because he is fully aware of what he is chasing down. I thought we were going to see like a massive outburst. Like remember when he scored 60 against Buffalo, he had like a monster outburst. It was yeah, like, he went nuts. Yeah. He went ballistic. So I thought he might do the same thing for 66. Even 65. So, even 65, man. Yeah. But yeah, what he's doing right now, he's laser focused and he's getting a ton of chances too. Like even against New Jersey in the last game, like he only scored one goal, but man, he could have had three. Easily. Yeah, he got robbed. He got robbed in the first, was it the first period when uh, the pass game was a, I favorite if it was Bertuzzi or Domi who passed it to him from behind, then it was a cheeky little pass. And he just put it right into his pad. He had the hole in that. Yeah, but, Jake Allen got so lucky, just bounced off his pad. He had that breakaway as well against Allen. Like, mm. man, I mean, I, I think I think he's gonna do it too. Like, yeah. it, it really is hard to bet against him because 60 came down to the wire a couple of years ago as well, and he got the job done. 
So seven in his last six, he needs four in his last four games. Let's do it, man. He's going to get it done. Here's the question. I'll ask you this one, okay? Because I've shot on Ovi um, because of my love for Wayne Gretzky and how I hate that Ovechkin is just piling up empty netters or he's on the ice just trying to get empty netters. And there's even been games where he scored two empty netters. Um, can the 70th goal be an empty netter? Oh, fucking right it can. Can it? Absolutely. I he think the first has, time he What hits... does he have this year? I think two empty netters, Matthews? Yeah. Two yeah, or three they're, empty they're both, netters at they're most, both I last, think he has. And they were both last week, I think. And Laporte, even his empty netters, like he's dangling guys and firing the puck in from like 150 feet away like it's nothing. Like he scores empty net goals, honestly, better than anyone I've ever seen. Like there's some guys, they shoot at the empty net and it's just a disaster. Yeah, like the nerves, like, the, the nerves kick in, right? Like not yeah. even close. Austin Matthews, he's like dangling guys at the far blue line, firing the puck like center cut into the empty net. Like even his empty net goals are outstanding. Yeah, I think that's one of those things, kind of like field goal kicking. Like you put NHL players, even at their own blue line, in a practice in an empty net, they probably get it, I'd say, what, 9 out of 10, like 19 out of 20, do the math, whatever. Um, But you put it in a game, and it's just like you see absolutely brilliant players just like fail tragically to get on the net because those nerves kick in. I'm pretty sure his 50th goal, the first time he got robbed a couple times of not getting 50 goals because of shortened seasons and injuries. But I think the first time he got 50 was an empty netter. Because I remember it was kind of like awkward. Like he didn't almost, he almost didn't want to celebrate it. But what what he's doing is insane. And this may raise some eyebrows a bit, like, because it's somewhat of a comparison. But the thing I've always said about Gretzky, as far as his numbers go, and I usually bring this up when people argue against the era that he played and say like, oh, well, he got 200 points four times, but look at the era. Goalies were terrible. Goal scoring was up. Everything went in. Guys were look like plumbers out there he was playing against. And I get it. Optically, you watch it compared to hockey now. It appears that way. But the argument I've always made back, or one of the arguments I've, I've made back, is he scored 92 goals in a season okay he had a 215 point season at what it gets to a point where it's almost impossible to get more like what you want him to score 300 points like it gets stupid now like he can't he's still a real no one is ever topping 215 points in a season even 200 even 200 yeah no one's even no one's even touching like 180 right maybe mcdavid's mcdavid's the only guy who's probably capable of doing this but yeah Maybe 175 right now is maybe like the absolute max if like the stars align for for Connor McDavid. But yeah, Even some that, of Gretzky's man. records, man, out of control. And but the, the point I'm, I'm going to make here is that is with regard to Matthews' goals. Okay, in this era of goal scoring, and like this isn't the worst era of goal scoring, but in this era of goal scoring. Even the number he's at now, if he does get to 70 or 71, like who knows what what he ends up with. I almost think it's, I don't want to say it's impossible to score more, but you're getting to the point now where you're like a goal a game. And literally from, from a statistical standpoint. And that's in today's hockey, it's too competitive. The guys are too talented. I, I think that's like a virtual impossibility for a guy to score 80. It's just not really possible unless a guy like Matthews or maybe Bedard in the future has a season where everything goes in for him a few games and he has like three, five goal games or some, something absolutely stupid. But I just think what he's doing is beyond historic. And as far as goal scorers go, and as far as, as far as, goal scoring seasons of go i think like this is at the top or near the top like we can talk about the season brett hall had or gretzky's 92 or you you mentioned lemieux in 95 96 this one's up there man like this because you're getting to the point based on the era where i don't think it's really possible to score more goals and it's just people can argue against it but it's simple math right what's crazy to me is that on a night-to-night basis if this guy leaves the game with only one goal like, we're actually kind of disappointed. <laughs> That's what's yeah. insane to me. Like, think about the Devils game, the Leafs' most recent game. Matthews comes away with one goal. But as we mentioned, he had, like, two or three other grade-A scoring chances. Could have scored two or three. 
And it's like, you know, we're disappointed. He's scoring one goal a night and we're like, ah, he could have had two. He could have had another hat trick. Like, what has he had? Like seven hat tricks this season, which is another just insane stat. Yeah. But it, it that's what's so wild to me. And like you go and you look at the other top scorers in the league. So this year, four guys have 50 goals. Obviously, Matthews, Reinhardt, Zach Hyman, and Nathan McKinnon. That's it. Four guys have cracked 50 Pasternak's at 47, Panarin's at 46, point 44, Kucherov 43. So like, it's not like everyone is having seasons like this, but we're, we've almost gone to the point now with Matthew, with Matthews, where it's just like, we're like numb to it. If he's only coming out of a game, scoring one goal, we're like, ah, I mean, it was a good game, but could have been a little bit better. Like this is psychotic what Bro, he's, he's doing. He's going to finish 20% ahead of the guy in second. It's crazy. That's crazy. Reinhardt has 53 goals right now. So he's yeah. 13 goals behind Austin Matthews. So if Reinhardt finishes with 55 and Matthews scores, like I'm going galaxy brain here. If he finishes with say 55 and Matthews scores one more goal, I'm pretty sure that's about 20% or more than 20%. It's nuts. It's, out, it's outrageous. So we just have to take this in as Leaf fans and appreciate what we're seeing because we might never see a greater season in a Leafs uniform than oh, we're seeing right oh, now from hmm. Austin Matthews. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing all the stuff online. Like we thought Phil Kessel was an amazing goal scorer. And I think his season high was like 37, but yeah, before he moved back, Matthews last season, remember Lepore and his down season scoring 40, 40 goals. We're like, ah, oh, what a shit season for Matthews better than any season. Phil Kessel ever had as a Leaf. Yeah. We'll do this one, Bruno, on, on our Toronto Maple Leafs podcast because I saw I saw it on Twitter last night. I'm sure you follow Jay Fresh, the big advanced stats guy, the player card guy. He was going off about Matthews. And to be fair, he was going off on him in awe, right? About how good he is defensively. But he's talking specifically about his goals, okay? And here's this guy. I mean, he's in that world. He's in that social media world. So he sees people's reaction to Austin Matthews. And this is a pure stats guy. And it was cool how he, he was able to see like the subjectivity in people where he was essentially saying Matthews doesn't get the credit he deserves because people just hate the Toronto Maple Leafs so much. And he made the observation that th this was his point, not mine. He said, people used to debate Crosby versus Ovechkin. Right. And it seems stupid now, but and, and take your pick. I'm sure people are, will still scream for Ovechkin, but I think for the most part, most people will go on the side of Sid and, but it was head to head. It was totally pushed head to head by fans all the time. Jay Fresh asked the question, if Austin Matthews did not play for the Toronto Maple Leafs, would he be more compared to McDavid? He probably would be because people make it their life's goal to literally hate the Toronto Maple Leafs and Austin Matthews. They make it their goal to compare every player from their favorite team to Austin Matthews. The comparisons of Cole Caulfield to Austin Matthews. I saw the funniest tweet. Someone's like Cole Caulfield is the only 40 goal scorer in NHL history to never score more than 30 goals. In a yeah, season. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> like, you know, Cole, Ca I mean, Cole Caulfield sticks Sick out to player. me just because Habs fans, you know, yeah. love to compare the two just because, you know, like they beat the Leafs in the playoffs. Caulfield's American. When he was coming up, it looked like he was going to be this phenomenal goal scorer. Dude has never scored more than 30 in a season. I mean, there's He's so many good, other though, man. <laughs> comparisons out there to, to Austin. And people just hate the Leafs. They hate the Leafs. They hate Austin Matthews. They try to nitpick everything about his game. He doesn't get enough assists. Even like before he had a 50-goal season, they're like, oh, he's never scored 50 in a season, even though he's averaged like, I don't know, at that time he was averaging over 50 a season if you, you know, extrapolated over 82 games. And people are like, oh, he never scored 50 before. Like just coming up with all this bullshit. And honestly, if he let's say he played for like the Philadelphia Flyers, pick pick your team. If you played for Pittsburgh, I think he said. I, th I think he said if Austin Matthews played for Nashville, it was was the point he made. Even Nashville, literally any other team, people would be like, "Oh my god, this guy is unbelievable!" Like he's on a better pace than Ovechkin was, just in terms of like goals per game, five on five goals. Like he's now he has now surpassed Ovechkin for goals in a single season. Like he's basically ahead of anything Ovechkin was doing and people still poke holes in his game. It's yeah. Crazy, you mentioned, man. you mentioned the comparison thing and, and you know, you see these tweets and I got to say 
the guy owned it. He totally owned it and made fun of himself. And that's what you should do in these situations. Someone pulled up a post from Mark Mathot from, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago. I would not trade Tim Stutzla for Austin Matthews. Oh yeah. We talked about that on our podcast, the Stutzla and Matthews comparison, because Stutzla signed like an $8 million contract and he had his 90 point season last year. That's aging terribly as well. No yeah. one in their right mind is taking Tim Stutzla over Austin Matthews. I don't care that he makes $5 million less. Like objectively, just... objectively though, I think something's wrong with Tim this year. I think he might be playing hurt something. I yeah, mean, he, I mean, something. after the season he had last year, 35 plus goals over 90 points. He's got 18 goals, bro. I think he's got like Brutal, two on man. the power play. I don't know if there's Brutal. an injury or something. And people say, oh, you make it, you made excuses for Matthews last year when he, when he only scored 40. Well, I'm observing it for my uh, second favorite team, according to uh, Anthony Bruno and uh, Timmy, Timmy Stu. Or what do they call Boots him? It's on Jimmy? the ground in Ottawa, Ontario. Michael yeah. LaCour. Sens fans, what do you guys call him? Jimmy Stu? I think Jimmy Stu is the ne- nickname. Yeah, it's hilarious, man. I, I can't wait to hear even more comparisons from all the Leaf haters as the years go on that their, their guy is better than Matthews and, you know, it's just, it's just outrageous. Even I, I, I think I even saw a comparison, like how uh, Slav, Slavkovsky ha- has someone tried to galaxy brain saying that he's had like a better start to his career than Austin Matthews. Yeah, just outrageous. It, stuff. it was, it was Austin Matthews points per game is rookie season compared to Slavkovsky. Sorry. Yeah. Compared to Slavkovsky's 19 year old season on the top line. So they, they took his games on the top line versus Matthews season at 19. I mean, and they were like the same. Make all you have to know want. is that Austin Matthews scored 40 goals as a rookie. That's I that's will say all though, man, Slaff, like people were down on him last year. Like that looked like a brutal pick. This guy looked like he may not even be an NHL player. He's had a good season. Fucking yeah. hat trick. Well, fucking yeah. hat trick he, last he's, night. He's man. playing well. Good Just for him. had a hat trick in his last game. He, he actually looks pretty legit now. We'll see what yeah, he does he, next year, how he follows it up. But. Yeah, he basically rose from the dead. Yeah, I think he's going to be a good player. All right, man. We got to talk uh, Eastern Conference playoff race right now because all the top teams are, you know, they're pretty much like jockeying for position right now. Like the Leafs are, are going to see if they're going to finish in second or third in the Atlantic. The Lightning are in the playoffs. Um, it's just coming down to this uh, terrible, terrible race for this final wild card spot with some Brilliant. garbage teams, in my opinion, at least. Um, right now the Capitals pulled down the final wild card spot in the East. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers have kind of dropped out of it. They've been in a tailspin recently, and then you have uh, Sidney Crosby and the Penguins, Dylan Larkin and the Red Wings, and then the Islanders are there. Like the Islanders are holding down the three seed in the Metro, but like they could still drop down to a wild card. So, how do you think this is going to shake out, man? Who's going to grab? Assuming that the Islanders get in, who's going to grab this final playoff spot in the East? I think that this Philadelphia thing is crazy, man. Like four to six weeks ago, Torts was probably in the conversation for coach of the year. And now he might get fired. And I saw the post uh, since January 23rd, the Flyers have an 849 save percentage. Eight that four eight four nine, and like Jay Fresh's thing, like the guy who posted it again, Jay Fresh, a lot of shout outs today. He was saying, I mean, people are everyone's saying, oh, torts, and he's like, this, he said, um, Scotty Bowman couldn't, couldn't have had a good team with a goalie with an eight four nine, but you now the the Flyers thing has been absolutely brutal. I think that the, their mathematical chances of making the playoffs are like under five percent as it stands. I don't know, like as a neutral hockey fan, okay, unless you're the biggest. Pittsburgh Penguins hater in the world. If you're a Caps fan or whatever, I get it. How can you not want it to be Pittsburgh that gets in? At least as the story goes for the National Hockey League of a team getting hot at the end of the year, as opposed to a story where a bunch of teams were playing like they didn't want to make the playoffs and one just kind of did out of default. No, come on. Like I, I, I love Sid. I've said that a million times on the show. I was kind of root for the Penguins for that reason. And I felt kind of icky eh? during during the Leaf game. Like, I'm not going to say I was full-blown. Like, I would never root against the Leafs. But if there was one night where I was like, yeah, like, we can lose in a shootout. Like, it would be the end of the world to, to help Sid get in the playoffs. Um, but, yeah, like, 
the Islanders, whatever, the Capitals, whatever. I mean, Detroit, eh, it's 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 a cool story if they're for the Red Wings to get in. There'd be a lot of hype in hockey town, but I just really I hope it's Pittsburgh. I hope it's Pittsburgh because it's a story and I'll say it too. They get in, they get into that spot. Who wants to play them? If you're that team in that number one seed and you look at the teams below and who could potentially get in Washington, please. The Red Wings, come on. Islanders, let's go. Uh, the team that's been like the hottest team in the league for the last month. It's not fun. So I, I so bad, so bad beyond my love for Sid and beyond being like a quasi penguins fan. I, I just really hope it ends up being the penguins for, for the story and for the excitement of it. You know, what's so disgusting about two of these teams right now that are currently occupying a playoff spot, the Islanders and capitals. So the capitals have a minus 40 goal differential. Like, that is pitiful. The Islanders, their goal differential at minus 21. You should not be making the playoffs when you have a goal differential that's that bad. I can understand if you're minus five, minus six. That's, you know... Uh, it can happen. Yeah, that that could happen, that right? Can happen. But when you're minus 40, the Capitals, a minus 40 goal differential. So you know what? Fuck the Capitals. I hope they don't get in. If I had to pick a team right now, and I'm just looking at their remaining schedules, I think the Red Wings are going to get into the playoffs. Ooh. So the Red Wings play the Penguins in their next game. Like, that's obviously a massive game. And listen, if they don't beat the Penguins in their next game, they're probably screwed. But Is that tomorrow? That is tomorrow on Thursday. So oh, while by the time we release this, Thursday night... So yeah, they're playing the Penguins on Thursday night, and then the Red Wings play the Leafs, but they close out the season with a back-to-back -back against the Montreal Canadiens. So uh, yeah, that's a pretty, you know, pretty good way to close out your season against the Habs. Not like the Habs are like completely horrific, but you know, yeah, I, it that's could be not worse. A bad way to close out the year. Yeah, it it could be it could be a lot worse. But man, thanks for the the heads up on that game, Bruno. I'm I'm excited for that one now. Pittsburgh, Detroit, because I guess too with that, I'm trying to say, is it like devastating? It's for, if Pittsburgh loses another one, because they're, I guess for either team, if, if for them to lose in reg, that's pretty devastating. Yeah, you can't lose in reg at this point if you're any of these teams, really. Yeah, especially if you're going head to head against one of them. Yeah, I think this is such a kick in the teeth to. And I'll say it, the three teams I think about, okay? And we'll have this discussion, I'm sure, at some point. Like, the most disappointing teams in the league this year. I mean, let's talk about the East, okay? The Senators have been disappointing, okay? Their fans are not happy with where this team's at, and they thought they'd be a lot higher. Even Buffalo, kind of similar. The goal was to fight for a playoff spot. And I remember, like, people were, people were picking them to make the playoffs at the start of the season. And the next one is New Jersey. I think that's a big one. Like we were both really bullish on New Jersey at the uh, start of the season and it just fell apart for them. They got to think like if we would have got our shit together, even somewhat, we'd be in a playoff spot because I, I think now I don't, I think the pace, it's not even going to be 90 points. So you go, you go a little over 500 and you're in the playoffs and it's NHL 500. I, I I always point out to people, you see a team that goes, uh, I don't know, 30, 20, the record's 30, 20, and 10. Okay. Well, yeah, the record's 30, 20, and 10. So it looks amazing. But if they have 10 overtime losses, then they probably have about that many over shootout and overtime wins. So their real record is 20, 20, and 20. They're 500. Like on the ice, they're 500. So it doesn't take much to make the playoffs. So like, I think those three teams, I think Ottawa, I think Buffalo, and I think New Jersey are looking at this right now with a lot of regret on, on how this season went, because how they started better. Maybe you can look at injuries teams, ha teams had some bad stretches. They had, man, that's, that's gotta be a kick in the nuts to look at, look at this tire fire of teams trying to get no playoff spot. And you think you could have been there. Yeah, especially Ottawa and Buffalo, because they were those teams that were knocking on the door last season. If they just had the seasons that they had last year, they would both be in the playoffs, or at least one of them would be in the playoffs. Yeah, good the, point. The Devils have been a colossal disaster. I mean, they should be 
fighting for the division lead is quite frankly, honestly, in the Metro. Like I know Dougie Hamilton's been out. Their goaltending's been terrible. They fired Lindy Ruff. But that team on paper, after what they did last season, they should have easily been a playoff team. But yeah, I, I think it stings a lot for Buffalo and Ottawa because if they had just had decent seasons like they did last year, they're probably in the playoffs. But another thing with the Red Wings, Alex Lyon, he helped the Panthers get into the playoffs oh, last year. Fucking and he's Alex been playing Lyon. well down the stretch. He had a monster he game. Um their last game again, not their last game where they uh they lost to Washington, actually, but the game before that, he made like 40 saves. And it's escaping me now who the Red Wings played in that game. But uh there it is. It was against Buffalo. They beat mm, Buffalo three nice. one and Lyon was unreal. So big game, Alex Lyon, man. He's gonna get the the Red Wings into the playoffs. But um would love to hear what you guys think. Leave your comments down below. Let us know who you think is gonna be the final playoff team in the Eastern Conference. But Lepore, before we close out the show, we have to talk about the shenanigans in Ottawa with the Senators and the Devils. What shenanigans, Anthony Bruno? I was laughing when I saw this happen because Senators fans, you can all, honestly, you can all, you know what at this point because you're a bunch of hypocrites, all right? Go back earlier in the season when Morgan Riley was on trial, okay, which was just ridiculous for what he did to Ridley Gregg, okay? He cross-checked him in the face. He crossed the line, whatever. I didn't even think it was that terrible. Ridley Gregg did not miss a game. And that was obviously because he took a slap shot into the empty net as time was expiring. It was a big fuck you to the Leafs. It was disrespectful. Well, no, go back to the weekend here. Devils against Senators. Uh, Nico Heischer... Uh, slides a puck into the empty net after the horn rang for the end of regulation. And Brady Kachuk loses his shit, skates across the ice. He's like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck was that? <laughs> Just losing it, okay? And now Senators fans are on social media trying to defend Brady Kachuk and say, different situations. This happened after the whistle. Ridley Gregg took a slap shot during regulation. Shut the hell up. You're a bunch of fucking hypocrites. It's oh, ridiculous. Bro, Just admit angry. that your captain got his panties in a knot. And listen, I don't like disagree that he got his panties in a knot because it's disrespectful to do that stuff. You shouldn't take a slap shot into an empty net and you shouldn't roll the puck into an empty net after the horn rings. So just admit that any team, as we talked about on this podcast, if that happened to any team in the NHL, the same response would have happened. And we even mentioned Brady Kachuk. Okay, we mentioned yeah, we that Brady did. Kachuk would have lost his shit if, let's say, Matthew Nyes took a slap shot in, into the empty net like Ridley Gregg did. And now fast forward, what, what has it been? Four, six, four to six weeks later, Brady Kachuk loses his shit when his team gets disrespected via the empty net. The floor is yours, Laporte. Bruno, I'm, I'm the hometown boy. I thought it was going to be me who was going to have to get riled up. But... Fans, fans are always interesting on 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 how they react to the react to things, and what I found incredible. Well, I shouldn't say no. I didn't find it incredible because we're talking about people here. Is how they changed what the conversation was six weeks ago. Moving the goalposts. So the point of number one, Otto was empty netter was in regulation, and Morgan Riley cross checked him in the head. Yeah. Those are different. Of course, the situation is different, but the debate six weeks ago was not like no Lee fan was defending Morgan Riley. No Lee fan was like, oh yeah, he should have cross-checked him. No, we all said, no, what he did was a dick move. He gave our favorite team the middle finger and Riley went after him and Riley crossed the line. Everyone said that, right? That Riley crossed. I the did line. love Riley's response, though. Oh, me too. We, me we, too. We loved the response. Let's just make that clear from Riley. Me too. But at the end of the day, yes, these two things are different, but they're same. Be they're the same because the underlying thing and the most important thing here is that Ridley Gregg and Nico Heischer were giving the middle finger to the other team, telling, telling them to go fuck themselves. And Morgan Riley reacted. And Brady Kachuk reacted. The debate I, that I saw online was, oh, whoa, you can't just shoot it into an empty net. Why don't you just stop them or not, or not lose? Like, like that, that was the whole argument. Okay, well, Ottawa, don't lose. 
And we talk about Brady Kachuk. I love Brady Kachuk. I love Brady Kachuk. Come to Toronto, Brady. Make it happen. Come to Toronto, Brady. Oof, that'd be nice. But I, I totally, I, I, if I'm a Sens fan, I, I'm happy with what Brady Kachuk did. So it's like, yeah, we were happy when Riley did it. You get the middle finger to our team. We want we want some response. And Brady, as expected, did the same thing. And I just wish people could laugh at it. And I know I'm giving credit, as, as I said before. If I'm a Sens fan, even, I think I would have said, yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I'm not kind of happy. It's sports, guys. Like, let's have fun about it. But I, I found that, to me, the weirdest thing is how people changed what the discussion was and made it seem like it, it had something to do with the cross-check. Nobody was defending the cross-check. And the fact that it happened in regulation or not is completely irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. It's about the code. And for those listening, I'm doing the, the quotation marks. The, a team, on both situations, a team broke the code. You do not take a clapper into an empty netter and you do not slide the puck in after the buzzer. What was it? I think it was in the seventies. I mean, like before our time, I think it was a player on the Canadians after the team was warming up, finished their warm up, He'd go down into their net and shoot it in the net. And w- someone comment down below. If you remember the exact team players and story, but they got a react. One of the guys finally said enough is enough. And like totally, totally mauled the guy. And that's when hockey was better when they were real men, but it's fine guys. It's, it's, it's okay to laugh at it. And both fan bases here are have are happy with that response. Again, I just find it hilarious how people change the story. And that's the thing. Like, I think Brady Kachuk did the right thing. I would yeah. love for my, my captain for a heart and soul guy on my team to get pissed off when my team gets disrespected. So that's the thing here. Like we're not, making fun of Brady Kachuk and being like, ah, he shouldn't have done that. No, of course he should have did that. But to you Senators fans who are moving the goalposts and, you know, going out of your way to try to convince everyone that these situations were different, you're wrong. And I I was just laughing. Like I was literally sitting on the couch laughing when I saw this happen because I go, look at this. After Morgan Riley was on trial, it seemed like he was on trial for like his first life. It's like he was going to receive like a, a lifetime prison sentence for I was nervous. Yeah, Greg I was nervous. Face. It was just outrageous. Like it's like ever uh, national media. Like it's the biggest story in hockey for like two weeks, and you know everyone wants to uh, to send Morgan Riley to jail. And now Brady Kachuk literally does the exact same thing. Now he didn't cross check Nico Heischer in the face, but it was just hilarious to see his reaction because again, as we said from the beginning, that is the exact reaction that all 32 teams would have when one of when their team is disrespected plain and simple plain and simple do you think here and maybe i'm totally off here but okay really greg he's known for kind of being like i don't even coming up yeah he's a shit disturber he's a shit disturber and i say that as a compliment okay that's the dna has and that's great okay so for him he can't plead ignorance him taking that clapper into the net, he knew what he was doing, 100%. And again, I'm okay with it, okay? Heischer, Nico Heischer, who is one of, like, I think he's, like, the, one of the least penalized players yeah, in the league. He is definitely not the same type of player as Ridley Gregg. So, one of the least penalized players in the league, and he's from Switzerland. <laughs> and, like, that's loaded, but uh, make, trying to make a point here. I wonder, okay, he's on that breakaway, and the and the horn goes... Was it just kind of like a reaction as opposed to giving the middle finger? And that's not a defense because you still, I mean, ignorance, you're still wrong. If you you kill someone by accident, you're still going to jail in most cases. So I just wonder though, again, still okay with the response from Brady Kachuk, but I wonder if, you know, that kid born in Switzerland who is not a violent player, not a shit disturber, never takes a penalty. He didn't really mean it to be overly aggressive. He just kind of did it as like a, I don't know, here, fire the puck in the net. Whatever. Yeah, I can agree and with that. And that's on a defense. Again, it's on a defense. Yeah, I I think I mostly agree with that. Like Ridley Gregg is a shit disturber. He's trying to be like the next Brad Marchand. Like, great power to him. It's great for hockey. So he was, you know, trying to be an asshole to the Leafs, clearly. Whereas Nico Heischer was probably just like, eh, all right, I'm just going to slide this into the <laughs> yeah. empty I, I don't think he maybe had the same intentions as as ridley greg but 
listen, you do stuff like that, it's still disrespect, and you're going to have to answer the bell. So yeah, Punch in the face. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Lepore, anything else you want to get off your chest before we wrap up this podcast? You know what, man? I got to say, I think I did pretty well for someone who's getting uh, woken up two, three times a night and wrongfully taking out the garbage on the uh, on days that shouldn't be taken out. I think I did okay. I think I showed some energy and pop. Not as much as you, though. You were revved up. You got. I saw you with that silver Leafs cup. You got Red Bull in there, Anthony Bruno? Oh, yeah. Oh, no Red Bull. This is just straight water. I brought this home from Scotiabank Arena after I paid $20 for a beer. <laughs> I had to bring this home with me. It, it, keep, it keeps my water nice and cold. Nice. Is that uh, one of those, like, do you get that as like a free thing or you pay for like the cup upgrade? No, like that's just like the biggest beer that you can order and it's 20 bucks. And I had a bag of popcorn. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to slide this into my bag of popcorn, which I also didn't finish. And I'm just going to casually bring it home with me. Well, so that's you, what I did. You, you, you paid for it. But I was at <laughs> telling stories now. Last year, I took my nephew to the uh, the Ninja Turtles movie. And uh, in the theater, and I grew up with Ninja Turtles. Lots of us did. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go see the Ninja Turtles movie. Kid wants popcorn. I go to get him popcorn. And he's like, oh, can I get like the Ninja Turtles? It's like a tin popcorn thing that you can, can keep and bring home and whatever. It's like a souvenir. I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. So I get it. And then I'm like, oh, and I'll I'll get it put in the tin. I think the charge was like $24. <laughs> That's yeah, absurd. I think above the popcorn, like it was just like absolutely crazy. And in that moment, they know the kid's going to want it. You're on the spot. Maybe you don't even know what you're doing. You ask for it. It's too late. They just tell you the price. But I got hosed out of uh, out of some cash over a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles popcorn tin. Yeah, it's Scotiabank Arena. One beer, okay, in this cup, a water bottle, and just a standard bag of popcorn over $40. I saw a post once. Somebody took a photo, and I was actually kind of surprised it was Edmonton and they posted like the, the concession sign, you know, you get, you know, two pops, two popcorns or like a hot dog, a popcorn and a pop, like all these combos. And it was insane how expensive it was. It was like two popcorns, two pops is like $54. It's like absolutely insane. Oh yeah. You, you just get hosed at Scotiabank arena, especially oh. for leaf games. Like, you know, Raptor games are pretty expensive too. Are Jay's the prices games, different? The prices for Raptor games I've noticed are I think like a little bit cheaper. I could be wrong, honestly. I could That'd be, be totally, interesting. That'd be interesting I could to be know. Totally wrong on this, but I'm just kind of racking my brain from my experiences. Jay's game's a lot cheaper at the Rogers Center. Yeah. That's just baseball for you. But yeah, Leaf games, you just get taken to the cleaners at Scotiabank Arena. Yeah, but, base, baseball games are so long and they get you on volume. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. So all right. Well, that's gonna do it for episode 140. Wow, 140. We're only 10 away from the big one five zero. Um, amazing, amazing. They're still what letting, they're still letting, they're still letting us do this, man. Yeah, we're, we're still <laughs> doing the podcast, but uh, this was a good one. Uh, our next podcast will most likely be our playoff preview podcast. So Ooh. enjoy the rest of the regular season for the Leafs. They only have four games to go. Austin Matthews, the chase for seventy. I did not think he was going to get seventy like ten days ago, and. Now he's uh, very much in play to do it. So that's obviously going to be the big storyline heading down the stretch. We'll see who the Leafs play in the first round. So enjoy the hockey down the stretch. And I say this all the time. If you're a longtime listener or if you're a new listener to this show and you really enjoyed the content, then please consider giving us a five-star rating and review on either Apple or Spotify. And if you're watching us on YouTube and you enjoyed the show, it would be amazing if you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, below and ring the notification bell so you know exactly when the GFP podcast is posting some new content. So for Michael Lepore, I'm Anthony Bruno. Go Leafs go. Matthew's getting 70. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>